Hey there, Walt here from Walt in PA. Today we're going to do something that I haven't done in quite a while, and that is give you a traditional style moto vlog where I talk your ear off on my way to a particular destination. And today we're going to go check out this place called Smokies. It's a not a barbecue joint. It is a cigar shop located in the Reading area. I've had some friends go up there pretty routinely actually and they said that it is a fantastic place and they wish that it were a bit closer so that they could go more often just because of the stellar service and growing selection. Again, I hear it's a wonderful cigar shop that is kind of up and coming and I haven't been there yet. So I guess the best place to start this cigar saga is at the beginning. So years and years ago, I used to work as a cabinet maker in this little shop with maybe five other guys. And one of, one of the guys and I got pretty close. I used to hang out, his, hang out at his house. We spent a fair bit of time together. I got to meet his family. And whenever his father-in-law came over, they would, they would share a cigar. So his father-in-law would bust out a cigar, take his cutter, and literally cut the cigar in half, and they would each smoke a half. <laughs> it didn't seem all that odd to me at the time because I had just never really been into cigars. But uh, <laughs> now that I know more about them, that is very, very odd. So anyway, he's, he's kind of into cigars. He's smoking cigars with his father-in-law. And eventually he, he winds up leaving the business that we're, we both work at together. And he, he goes out on his own to do contracting. And one day he gets a call from a customer, this new customer who asked him to do to replace a transom, a window above a door. So he goes out and he does it, and I guess he strikes up a conversation with the, the customer, who's this older woman. And I'm not really sure how cigars came into the picture, but she uh, she had mentioned that her late husband was a cigar collector, was very big in the cigars, and he asked she asked if my friend wanted them. So he said yes, and he wound up taking a bunch of stuff home. As he's going through it, like he's telling me, oh, this is a good one, this is a good one. Meanwhile, I, I don't know what any of this stuff is. But he gets me to try one, and you know, the next couple times I'm over, he's got this abundance of cigars, so, you know, having a cigar together becomes like the thing that we do. We, you know, we get together, we have a couple of beers, have a cigar, and it turned into this really fun, you know, social thing that we did. So as as the cigars started to run out, you know, I started going online and ordering from jrcigar.com. Mostly their, um, oh, what was it? Their, their Cuban alternatives is what I was ordering. Because in this mix of stuff that he had been given were um, a lot of uh, Havana cigars. Now, neither one of us knew exactly what they are. We just knew that they were Cuban. And because of this, they had to be incredible. And since they were illegal and you couldn't get them easily, like these, these JR Cuban alternatives, like, like they had to be the next best thing, right? <laughs> so I start ordering from JR Cigars. I get more into cigars than he does. I wind up making a few friends that are also big into cigars. And the, the hobby kind of expanded exponentially from there for me. For a while I was, you know, collecting rare cigars. I was on the hunt for new and exciting cigars. So while I'm hunting for these new cigars and, and excitedly trying to find different cigars to try, I realized that cigar shops were a lot of fun. You know, you get to meet new people and hang out and just a, just a cool place in general. So I started bouncing around, you know, hitting different shops in the area. And eventually I wound up finding one that I liked a lot and I wound up calling it, you know, my home shop. Fortunately, it was pretty close to home. I had worked in Reading at the time. This was just, just over the bridge in West Reading. A grand total of maybe six minutes from work. 
So when I got out early on Fridays, my father and I would meet up at uh, Kensington Tobacconist in West Reading, hang out with the owner, Kurt, have a couple of cigars, have a grand old time. And that became the thing that we did together for a number of years on Friday afternoons. So uh, sadly, Kensington Tobacconist eventually had to close its doors. You know, one thing to, meant to note is that Kurt, the owner, had a bit of a, a quirky personality. He was kind of hard to, to get to know, rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Kind of a dry sense of humor, and his, his filter was very limited. <laughs> so if he didn't like you, he was the type that he would let you know relatively quickly where you stood with him. But, you know, if you could, if you could get past that, that mildly abrasive type of personality and his dry sense of humor, he was actually a really nice guy. Uh, a guy that I had, you know, hours and hours and hours of conversations with over the years. I mean, at one point in time, I just stopped hanging out in the lounge and I would just hang out in the retail space the entire time I was there, you know, just to talk with Kurt. So when he, when he had to close up shop, it was... It was really disappointing. So after Kensington closed, there were two other options in the area. The first was this place called Suburban Tavern, and it was kind of a weird setup. Uh, at, at one point in time, it looked, I guess it was like a, a two level apartment building where, you know, there was an apartment on the first floor and an apartment on the second floor. So on the, on the ground level, they put in the Suburban Tavern, which is a bar and grill. The, the kitchen was in the basement. The, the dining area was on the, the ground level. And after a number of years of being open, he expanded his business and he put a cigar lounge on the second floor. But the space wasn't, uh, wasn't really renovated for it. The space wasn't really renovated for it. So it just felt like a disjointed cluster of rooms. You know, you would walk in and the retail space was kind of, I don't know, I guess it would be like the living room. And then there was a little hallway which connected to the old dining room. And then another little hallway that connected to the old bathroom. And it was just kind of, you know, and then there were other smaller rooms, I guess, which were bedrooms at one point in time. So it was, it was kind of disjointed. Eventually, I think he renovated the space to open it up and make it more of a, a large communal area. But I just wasn't, I wasn't around long enough to, to see that come to fruition and, and hang out there. Uh, there was this other place in town called Cigars Cigars. And it was the, I guess it was the Reading location in the Fairground Square Mall. It was beautiful when they built it, uh, when they outfitted the space in the mall. But uh, I guess it was kind of a blessing and a curse. But because malls were kind of dying, they got a spectacular lease for, I think it was like 10 years. Or that's what the rumor was. They were getting this spectacular lease for almost a decade. But uh, it didn't do well. Like the, it was, it was in a weird spot in the back of the mall. You almost had to know where it was to find it. So really, if you were in there for any length of time, the only people you saw coming in were the cigarette smokers from the mall ducking into the cigar shop to have a quick cigarette on their lunch break or, you know, their their 15 minute break. But because they were locked into this long lease, the place, it was kept open, but it was just dying a slow death. The, the location just wasn't being kept up. I mean, at one point there was a leak. So some ceiling tiles got stained. And I guess the leak was never fixed. The ceiling tiles started falling out. So you walked into the place and half the ceiling tiles were stained. <laughs> a couple were missing. Uh, after, after they started falling out, the leak still didn't get fixed. You know, you'd walk in there and find a bucket on the floor to collect any rainwater that might have fallen. Uh, it started developing a nasty smell. So it quickly went from what seemed like a pretty beautiful store, what could, what, what could have been a very beautiful store with a lot of potential, quickly went downhill and it, it, it almost became the land of misfit toys where 
the franchise, because Cigar Cigars is a, is a franchise and they have multiple locations, it, it was almost like they would just ship off the stuff that didn't sell to this place. And that's kind of <laughs> where it collected. Uh, the selection was terrible. The, the, the condition and cleanliness of the store was terrible. Eventually it went away, and I don't know that anyone really missed it when it did finally die. So I had mentioned that I used to hang out with my dad on Friday afternoons. Now, this was long after Kensington had closed its doors. I get a message from my dad, and he said that, Hey, there's this place in Gilbertsville. You should check it out. I you know, stopped in on a whim when I was in town one day. It's a cool place. The owner is really nice. You should check it out. So one day we got together over there, they were having a, an event, and for the life of me, I can't think of the, the brand that was featured in this event, but it was a packed house. Uh, very busy, very friendly. I, I enjoyed myself immensely. You know, the owner, even though it was busy, the owner made a point to, to go around and get to know everyone and make sure that everyone had, had a bit of time with them. They knew the deals that were going on. You know, he was if he needed anything, like he, he was on top of it. He impressed me and I had a really good time and started coming back. Now, eventually I moved out of the Reading area. At the time I was driving all the way down to this place in Gilbert's Hill, a place called Sir Stogie's. Actually, I think uh, Brian Hewitt and I, me, Brian Hewitt and Mike Forey, I believe have had met up at that place once or twice over the years. So anyway, I moved from Reading down to the Boyertown area. Sir Stogie's becomes my new home shop. I go in there quite often. I got to know the guys. It was a fantastic store. So it was run by this guy named Tim and his wife Sandy. It kind of like Suburban Tavern, it was a unique setup. It was uh, an old factory style building, three story brick building. Um, I, it, it used to be a cigar factory at one point and then they started doing textiles. I think like they made shirts and underwear for a number of years. Uh, at some point in time, Tim and his wife bought the place. They renovated the third floor and created a very large apartment for themselves there. It's like a 4,000 square foot apartment. And then the, they renovated the second floor and that became Sandy's business where she did custom flags and shipped them out all across the country. And eventually the first floor became Sir Stogie's. It was a soft retirement for this guy, Tim. He'd been working in maintenance for years and years and just decided that uh, he wanted to, to enjoy himself and still make a little bit of money in the process. So you know they opened up the cigar shop and this lounge became became his retirement and uh it was very apparent if you ever got to know tim that he he loved the place genuinely enjoyed the people and the surroundings it's very social and just a very very fun place a uh, place that i spent 100 percent of my cigar budget in for a number of years now eventually tim decided that he was going to move south him and his wife sandy were sick of the snow and cold winters here in Pennsylvania. They had family down in the Alabama area, so they sold the shop, moved down south, and uh, it's where they are both retired today. Sir Stogie's didn't actually go away. It was sold to a guy in the cigar industry that I had a lot of respect for, and I was, you know, a regular in there. Um, multiple times a week, spent a lot of time there. It effectively became my my secondary office. You know, I'd work all day. Then I'd grab my laptop and go to the cigar lounge, hang out while I was working on my business. Um, you know, it wasn't quite the same after it was sold. The, there was a, a very large decline in the social aspect of the, of the place, but I still liked it. The, there was still a, a dedicated core group of guys that uh, that supported the business for years after Tim moved away. But uh, these days, uh, I don't go there anymore for a variety of personal reasons. But I hear the shop's doing pretty well. Um, 
again, <laughs> just for a variety of personal reasons that really worth getting into, I've decided to no longer spend my money in that store. This is where there's that awkward silent pause and we move on. <laughs> so for the past almost year, I haven't, well, I haven't set foot in that store and coming up on a year, uh, I've been hanging out at another place. S sadly, I haven't been able to see everyone that used to hang out in the lounge. But uh, I do hang out with a few of them, and the, the few of the guys that I do get together and hang out with are telling me about this new awesome place called Smokies, which we're going to visit today. And I think that kind of brings you up to speed on, uh, on the whole cigar saga. I, I feel like... <laughs> I realize I've been talking for a very long time, but I feel like I was expecting it to be longer. Well, I just left Smokey's, and I gotta say, man, that is a beautiful cigar lounge. I am highly, highly impressed. I mean, the, the furniture is nice, the store is clean. They've got uh, a ventilation system that works really well. They've got mezzanine seating up above. I mean, that is a beautiful, beautiful store. If it were closer, I would absolutely go there more often. The prices are about average. Um, they had some some good, solid boutique brands, stuff that I was really interested in outside of, you know, the usual Monte Cristo, Rocky Patel lineups. And I will most definitely be back. It's funny, I was trading text messages with uh, a couple of friends of mine who've been there before. I said, you know, this is very unusual. I'm sitting in here, I'm drinking a cup of coffee, I'm having a cigar. I wasn't planning on staying, but the place was just so inviting that I couldn't help myself. And w the whole time I was there, I mean, the manager came over and checked on me like three times, topped off my coffee, he didn't charge me for coffee, he said it was on the house. Um, people that were in there hanging out were very friendly. I just, I can't say enough about that place. Very, very impressed. So folks, that's gonna do it for this one. Thank you very much for joining me on this little ride to Smokies in, well, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what town it's in, but uh, it's kind of just outside of the, the heart of the city of Reading. So I'm gonna assume it's in Reading or be like Kenilworth or something. But uh, thank you very much for, for following along. If you enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor and hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And as always, ride safe and I will catch you in the next one.